Gordon Freeman. Back time to. Hey, I'm Steve Lee, and this is part three of a series where I make a fully playable Half-Life 2 level from scratch and talk you through the entire creative process. In the first video, I showed you how I often design this kind of level in text first, and in the second video, I started building it for real in Half-Life 2's level editor, Hammer. I also explained why I'm building it in a super iterative way that I refer to as the skateboard approach. And in this video, I'm going to continue that iterative approach while building out the final act of the level. Here's a sneak peek of where we end up at the end of this video, but I want to start off by talking about a mistake I nearly made that I think would have got me into a lot of trouble. It was such a kind of textbook schoolboy error to make that, um, <laughs> to be honest, I was tempted to pretend that I didn't do it. But of course I realised that this series is all about the creative process, and me catching myself falling into this trap is a lesson worth talking about. So, what was the problem and how did it happen? The plan was always that the level ends with the player escaping in a vehicle, and the climax was supposed to just be a big gun battle towards that vehicle. But then when I tested it, and I jumped inside the vehicle and drove away, it felt so much fun to drive around in it that I have thought that's what the finale of the level should be. It should be about escaping in that vehicle and not just fighting your way towards it. And this seemed exciting to me particularly because I've never actually made a Half-Life 2 level that uses vehicles, and so it's quite new territory for me and I thought it would be fun to explore that in these videos. So I started designing this whole new expansion of the level to incorporate this new huge area that we needed to make for a vehicle escape sequence. Then I jumped onto YouTube and did some research on episode 2 of Half-Life 2, looking for reference for how they use the assets and what kind of locations they use, and they made me realise that driving sections in Half-Life 2 are usually on quite a big scale, and that what I had in mind would take place over this kind of organic bumpy terrain. And so even though I tried to design it in as small and simple a way as I could, what I came up with in my head still ended up feeling at least twice as big and complex as the rest of the level. It wasn't until I started to build this out and figure out the geometry that I basically realised I was quite stressed. I'd gone from feeling confident and happy about how things are going, to suddenly feeling like I was way out of my comfort zone and this would take twice as long to do if I pursued this direction. This is just one of those times when I think the right call is the simpler call. I'd clearly fell into the trap of massive scope creep, getting distracted by the big shiny thing that is a vehicle section. Whereas what I should be doing is saying, this is an escape level, and if this was a real game with more levels, then the vehicle section would be in the next level, and not this one. So let's go back to the drawing board. What do we need to do to this area to make it feel like a finale, where you've fought your way to this vehicle, and it ends with you speeding away in it? I think the main thing is that we need more buildings. Buildings that enemies can spawn from to attack the player, and also buildings that the player can fight through in order to gain access to this vehicle because it shouldn't just be sitting there waiting for the player to steal it. With that in mind, it feels like we should also introduce Combine Force Fields. These are barriers that the Combine can move through, but players can't. And so they're super useful for feeding enemies into the area that the player is in, while either maintaining a level boundary, or asking the player to find a way to disable it to progress. So we're talking about more buildings and introducing Combine Force Fields. And now we're back in Notepad to figure out some kind of logical sequence for them. So I'm going to add, in fact, I'm just going to create a new section for the climactic battle to the vehicle. And I'm just going to try and note down what I came up with then, just talking about it in the editor. So for example, one key idea was that player can see escape vehicle behind combine force field, right? That's a, that's a crucial new addition that we that adds a lot of good structure to this. Because now from the very beginning of the level, we can see not only the escape vehicle, but the fact that it is trapped behind you know, this combined force field, kind of teasing the player to say, this is clearly what you should be going for. That's your way out. So a player can see the vehicle, escape vehicle behind the combined force field. And I'm just going to make this almost a task list, just things I need to remember to do. Add buildings that combine enemies can spawn from. Um, player has to gain entry to one of them to disable the force field that the escape behind. And let's see what else, what other elements we have. 
don't think we want one of these. Gravity gun would be a fun, ob obvious one. AI civilians I like, but as I discussed in I think the first video, there's some weirdness to the idea that you free some civilians and then you just kind of drive off on your own at the end of the level. The solution that springs to mind is that we use Alex instead of AI civilians because she can actually get into the car and therefore we could escape with her and drive away, which is pretty cool. So let's write that down as um, a potential idea as well. Maybe Alex is in one of these buildings and you can escape together. Also, I'm thinking back to one of the buildings that I saw while I was researching Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Um, there was a building in there that I liked the look of, that I want to kind of use, some th use as a base for the main building that we'll kind of access to disable the combined force field. Use building Half-Life 2 Ep 2 building but make the player find a way in via the roof. I want to get in a, a bit of almost dishonored like stealth and sneaking around and agility by creating some way for them to access a building they will know they want to get into via the roof uh, because it's kind of a feature of these um, buildings that there are holes in the, in the rooftop and it feels like a cool way to make something that feels, you know, a bit more interesting than just shooting everybody and then running through the door. So there are five ideas for this uh, battle to the vehicle. Um, let's see if they're even in the right order. Player can see the escape vehicle from behind the combined force field. That's at the very beginning of the level, so that's at the start. Add buildings that combined enemies can spawn from. Player has to gain entry to one of them to disable the force field that the escape vehicle is behind. I think we should encounter Alex in one of these buildings before we disable the force field to get to the escape vehicle, because that has to be the final objective, right? So that's cool. Now, now we know that there are two buildings, at least two buildings. Alex is in one of the earlier ones, and we have to gain entry to the second one in order to disable the force field and get the vehicle. So let's switch things around a bit and then get this down on the list. Alex can hack the combined force field question mark okay what else there's the gravity gun which we still haven't kind of found a place for in the level and alex is in one of these buildings maybe the gravity gun is in the same room as alex or the same building as alex so the player can't uh, get to the vehicle without saving Alex because she can hack the combined force field. When the player gets to Alex, they also get the gravity gun. And the gravity gun, hmm, the gravity gun, can that be the key to getting in via the roof? Is what I'm wondering. Does the gravity gun create the opportunity to make a way to get into a, a building via the roof? I'm gonna hope that's the case and we're gonna try and figure that out later. But basically, looking at this now, we have a nice little sequence of ideas there. You know, these nested objectives that create a structure to this climactic battle. Because, you know, meanwhile, we're obviously fighting Combine while we do all this. Every time we break into a new building, we'll be triggering new waves of enemies and that kind of thing. And now, like in the last video, we've nailed down the sequence and the structure of the experience. We use that to figure out what the layout should be, or what it could be. So this is me taking a screenshot from the top-down view in the Hammer Editor, putting it into Photoshop and using it as reference to start thinking about the layout with. Here is the doorway that the player leaves the building from. This is where the vehicle currently is, but I have a feeling that's a bit close and the scale is all a bit small now. We'll look into that later. We know that we want a combined force field blocking the player's access to that vehicle, so we'll just stick that in now. And we also know that the player still needs to be able to see this vehicle from the very first room that they start in through the window. And then they make their way through the building itself uh, in you know the Acts 1 and 2, and they exit through this doorway here. One thing I know about this area here, where the player will have a fight with the Combine, is that I don't want it to just be completely flat. 
I want to do at least something to make sure that there's some verticality to it. And the natural thing would be to create a kind of walkway that a player steps out onto, which elevates them slightly above the main battle area. And there could be a staircase to the side that they can go down to enter it. Now I'm drawing some cover on there so that when enemies rush out from in front of us, we've got some cover to kind of hunker down and be safe behind. And they can fight from there or go down the steps to engage at a closer distance. Now that I've drawn that walkway in, the vehicle and the kind of combined force field looks really close. So I'm going to grab that and drag it behind. And we'll figure out the real scales and kind of distances when we build this in the editor. And now I'm just going to draw in an, a basic outline of this enlarged courtyard. But hopefully you can see how I've got my plan in text and now it's basically a puzzle that I'm trying to solve about what kind of layout can support what we talked about in the text file. You know, it's a very logical process what I'm doing at the moment. I just drew an outline around the start room there to kind of represent the scale of it. So the second thing in our list is to add buildings that combine enemies can spawn from. And the natural place to put that enemy building is here, which is directly in front of us when we leave the first building. And maybe that building or its entrance spills into the courtyard a bit, just to break up this basic square shape we have. There needs to be some cover and stuff, so we'll add some random boxes and stuff here. This could be a vehicle, although that's probably a bit too um, deep into the corner. We'll uh, move that in a bit. So we'll have a wave of enemies entering the arena as such from the building in front of us. And then what's next? Maybe Alex is in one of these buildings and you can escape together. And maybe the gravity gun is in the same building as Alex. So let's say Alex is here, um, really badly drawn A, and we'll put the gravity gun over there, totally placeholder for now. What next? Use Half-Life 2 Episode 2 building, but make the player find a way in via the roof. Alex can hack the combined force field. Okay, so we're kind of running out of space here on the in Photoshop, so I'm just going to scale this down to give us more room. Now let's draw the back of this building in. It might be a bit small, that's a pretty tiny building, but we'll see. And let's say these are different rooms in the building. We'll figure out the details when we build it in the editor. But uh, that could be some kind of courtyard, and this could be a second building with the control panel in, or the combined force field. And this one could curve around two sides of the courtyard, just to be more interesting, and maybe create space for different entrances into the building, that kind of thing including the entrances via the roof, which, uh, let's put two of them in for now. Maybe those doors are locked actually, and there's some kind of gameplay. Let's say just you climb up something here to get onto the roof and choose your entry point from the roof. So to rewind a bit, the player is trying to get to this vehicle. They enter this building, they meet Alex, grab the gravity gun. Then they enter this courtyard Maybe there are combine guys shooting at us from inside the second building while we're in the courtyard. We deal with them or not, we, but we find a way onto the rooftop uh, to then jump into the building. Uh, could be a panel here, like a computer thing that Alex can hack. Conveniently, there's a door here which we, we can now open from the inside and let Alex in. If we've dealt with the enemies, Alex rushes to the computer thing there's obviously a door out to the vehicle, and now she's turned off the force field so we can jump in the vehicle and drive away. Down our very simple tunnel, which is not like the massive thing that I started designing at the start of this video. So that's it. Now we have a layout for the final part of the level. It's obviously rough and there's loads of details to work out, but it gives me a good overall sense of the structure of the final part of the level. And so now I can switch to Hammer and start building geometry knowing that it serves that structure and player experience. So I start by lowering the floor by 64 units to create this little walkway that we walk out onto when we leave the first building. This is because, just out of principle, I don't want the building that the player is coming out of, the building that they're moving towards, and the space in between all to be on the same flat plane. It's just a bit boring. Now I'm doing a really quick and dirty job of alternating between expanding on the area as a whole, remembering that I have to keep the level kind of enclosed uh, in order for it to build properly, and also starting to build out the exterior of this next building that we go into. 
leaving some basic doorways so I can start thinking about entrances and exits to rooms and stuff like that. At this point I'm thinking about the stretch that the player drives down when they escape and finish the level. As always, it's super boxy and simple for now, just to get it represented in the map. I'm also starting to think about the level boundaries, um, because I don't want the level to be completely surrounded by buildings in a you know, slightly artificial way. In my head, I'm picturing this as being quite similar to the setting used in episode 2 of Half-Life 2, where there's these industrial buildings and features in the middle of kind of quite open wilderness, uh, you know, outdoors. And so I'm starting to think about which boundaries of the level are going to be kind of big, massive buildings blocking the player's view versus maybe some fences that block the player from leaving the level, but also they can see through it and see things in the distance trying to get a kind of natural and aesthetically pleasing combination of the two. Now I'm placing props to represent a key gameplay element, which is the combined force field that stops the player from getting to the escape vehicle and forces them to fight through the building in order to disable it first and then escape. And this felt like a good point to build what we've made and test it in game. But before I can do that, I had to fix a bunch of gaps in the level, which is what I'm doing now. This is some of the cost involved in building in a really quick and dirty way like I have done. But now we're good to go and I'm just moving the player start to the front of the building so that we can test from there. Let's see how this feels. Get the suit and... Oh! Those uh, combine guys aren't shy about using grenades. Let's just quickly take these out, get a sense of that combat distance. It feels kind of okay with a shotgun, maybe a bit far away. The combined force field blocks the player because it's just a brush with a transparent texture on it. But now we have that in as a barrier. I should add some cover to this walkway so that the player can stay there and fight from there. Oh, we're in pitch black in this building because I haven't put any lights in. But, uh, let's go on here. We can get to the vehicle, but now we'll be stuck inside here. So sometime soon we need a way of disabling this force field so that we can escape. But now you can see how we're starting to represent what this final act is going to be. At this point, before I go back to the editor and build more Geo, I thought it would be good to have some reference for the buildings I'm making. So I went back to the video of episode 2 and just took some screenshots of various bits so that I could refer to the ways that they use the textures and the assets and that kind of thing. Remember that this is the rough plan for the layout that I scribbled earlier. What I'm starting to build out now is the back section, with an extra courtyard and a building that wraps around half of it. This final building will be the one that has the control panel that we can use to disable the combine force field so that we can speed away in the uh, escape vehicle. Here I think I realised that I built it slightly wrong in relation to the layout that I sketched out. So I'm taking the time to look at it from top down and just making sure that I'm getting things right and I'm representing the right layout. In hindsight, maybe I could have just blocked this out with solid cubes for each building and then split it into different walls and floors and stuff. But what you're seeing is just the way I hashed it out on the fly. And if you're doing this for real, then I would recommend more planning than what I'm doing. You know, this is me working very quickly for a video. At this point, I remembered that I had the idea of uh, the final building being one that the player accesses through the roof. And I kind of instinctively built these buildings two floors high again, but then I realized that, for my current plan at least, that's not really necessary. And so in order to make access to the roof easier, I lowered the walls and made the buildings only one story tall. This also had the side effect of suddenly making the geo that I was building feel way clearer and easier to read, which was a nice benefit. This is where I realized I should put in the computer that you use to Disable the combined force field. I'm just placing a mesh for now, it won't functionally work, but it's in there represented. And now I'm breaking the ceiling up into chunks to create little holes in the roof that the player can choose to drop into this building through. I realised that letting the player onto the rooftop of the last building at the back of the level creates some new questions about level boundaries and how I block the player into the level, but I'm not worrying about that too much for now. And before I jump in and test that new geo we've just made, I thought this would be a good point to try and do our first bit of enemy scripting, which is simply to make these enemies not appear at the start of the level, but then script them to spawn when we walk out of this doorway. Now putting the trigger volume there in the doorway means that we will see them spawn because they're outside of the building, 
but uh, I'm doing that deliberately so that I can test whether or not the scripting is working. Let's see how this goes. So when we step outside, there should be no... Oh, they are there, but they're not awake. This is a Half-Life 2 enemy scripting thing. And nothing happens when I walk through the doorway. And yeah, they're totally broken and weird. Funky scripting. I need to remember how to do all this stuff. Okay, so after lots of trial and error trying to get the results I wanted, I've changed the approach a bit and I'm moving one of these combine guys to a window that they can see through, which will wake them up in a more natural way that fixes the issue, basically. I'll just gloss over this for now to keep this focus on the creative side and not the technical stuff. Okay, let's see if this works. There we go, way better. Although now they feel really far away. Too far away for this shotgun, but that's progress. So with that little victory, I thought it was a good time to add a bunch of props to this area. The first thing is adding these railings and some of these kind of panels for cover. Uh, very much placeholder, but I just want the player to be able to take cover in this fight instead of just being shot up. There I've just made the first window block line of sight so that this combine guy can't spot the player until they exit the building on the ground floor. These yellow boxes that I've placed at the doorways are called info nodes and they help NPCs understand where they can go and act as a way of kind of encouraging them to go to specific locations. What else? I've added a car in for cover, uh, some barrels and stuff, just kind of getting some junk in there, but also useful cover, like these concrete barriers, which don't really make sense, but they're useful for now. That's all I care about. So let's see how this tests. Some nice clear cover for me to use now. Guys stepping slightly outside the building, but something's not quite working. But yeah, this cover on the player's side definitely helps at least. But yeah, there's definitely something wrong or missing that's stopping the NPCs from moving around that combat space. But all the cover that I added really helped. And I was kind of curious to test from the very beginning of the level now to see how that outdoor section looks after the work we've done on it so far. And thankfully I've not screwed anything up and things still look quite good out of the window in terms of seeing what you're supposed to be able to see. And I like seeing that combine guy stand by the window. Even just that starts to sell this feeling that I've been captured at this combine outpost. And if I look through this door, I can see another guard on the other side. So now it's like, okay, I've got to get out. How do I do this? So that's all looking pretty good. Back in the editor, and I'm just duplicating more of those info nodes, hoping that it might help the combine guys move around a bit more. And I'm also duplicating that combine guy to create a third one on the right side. Oof. Oh, there we go. Instantly more movement. That guy moving out towards the car. Yeah, everybody's moving way more now. Maybe a little too much, but that's good to see. Yeah, this is, uh, that felt a lot more dynamic and interesting. So those extra info nodes are doing their job. So we're definitely getting somewhere now and I just wanted to go back to the text file to check that I hadn't forgot something and that I'm staying on track. So player can see escape vehicle behind the combine force field. I've added buildings that combine enemies can spawn from. But what I haven't done is put Alex in one of these buildings so that we can escape together. And also adding the gravity gun to that same building as Alex, which I think could get pretty interesting because I don't think that space in the building is very big. But let's just do it and see how it goes. So yeah, back in the editor, I looked at this building and it does look pretty small. To the point where I considered making this building bigger or adding a second floor to create space to add Alex and the gravity gun. But in the end, I decided to keep it simple and just get Alex in there and represent it. So I just built this little cupboard room inside that area and placed her inside. So now Alex is in the level and I'm testing it. And the first thing I find is that for some reason, she's not following me. And I thought that was something she just does automatically, but apparently not. And this ended up taking me quite a few attempts to figure out what was going on or how I could fix this problem. In this test, you can see that I added a normal civilian. Hello, Dr. Freeman. 
to see if it would behave any different. And it turned out it did. This civilian follows me automatically. And in the end I use an entity called an AI goal follow to explicitly tell Alex to follow me and thankfully this works. Gordon Freeman, it's about time to... When you're doing level design for this kind of game where NPCs have a lot of systemic behavior but also involve a lot of scripting, testing and improving and bug fixing your script is a big part of the job because there are always loads of ways that NPCs can end up doing things that you don't want them to do. And whenever possible, you want to design for the strengths of what the NPCs are designed to do while avoiding their weaknesses and limitations. We're getting close to the level feeling like you can play it from start to finish with all of its structural elements in place. The next thing is implementing a placeholder switch that I can use to turn off the combined force field so that me and Alex can jump into the vehicle and drive away. And at the end of the level, partway down this tunnel, I'm adding a trigger volume that will activate a fade to black, along with a little mission complete message. Again, I'm copy pasting this stuff from my arcane level design test to save me time. Here I'm copying some crates from the start of the level and quickly creating a way for the player to get onto the rooftops to get into the final building. And I thought that while I'm at it, I'll copy the door from Alex's cell and paste it around these two buildings so that we no longer just have loads of open doorways, but we have rooms separated by doors. Finally, before we test, I'm just adding some shelves into this big room to make it feel a bit less empty. Let's jump in and see how this looks. Sorry, Doc. Still Alex and a civilian. They're both following okay. We've got doors now. Here's our wonky little way up to the rooftop for now. This allows us to, uh, can we get up here? Yep. This allows us to use the holes in the rooftop as a way in. I'm imagining some enemies being in there for us to kind of attack from above before we drop down. Oh, oh so I've, I've not locked the doors yet, so there's actually no reason to go onto the rooftop. And Alex can just run through, but we'll fix that later. I've flipped the switch, uh, force field is off, but Alex does not get into the car. That's something I'm not sure how to script yet, but we'll look into that later. I'm just going to test the fade to black at the end of the level message yep there we go okay cool that's kind of us being able to finish our level for the first time which is nice but Alex wasn't in the car with us and it took me a while to figure out how to script this and make it work and during that process I updated the escape vehicle to episode 2's funkier new car now what am I doing oh yeah I'm copying um, button panels next to locked doors from my arcane level design test I realized that there are three doors that I need to lock. The door to Alex's cell and the two doors leading to the final building, which by being locked, they force the player to get onto the roof and enter the building that way and then unlock it to allow Alex to follow. So we're getting pretty close now and this seems like a good point to test the whole of this final act of the level. So we spawn here in the first building and we get into this fight. Oh, that guy just threw a grenade, dropped it next to himself. That's worked quite nicely as cover. That guy can run through the force field, but I can't. Here's Alex. These doors should be locked now. Forcing us to climb up onto the roof. No enemies for now. Now we can unlock this door and allow Alex through. Oh, where is, she? where is she? Let's see. Turn the force field off. Yeah, she's waiting on the other side of the force field. And now, is this going to work? Yes! Alex jumps in and we're driving away. And fade to black. Mission complete. Awesome. I'm pretty happy with that uh, in terms of what we've achieved in this video. Now I can change the player stats and stuff back to normal and we have a basic level that we can play start to finish with a good representation of what every beat of the level is about. So now that we have this kind of working version of pretty much the whole level, all future work on this level is now just making it better, which is a cool place to be in. There's a few little tweaks I have in mind to quickly make this first area more interesting. 
But obviously this second area, which is just an empty shell at the moment, is something to iterate on. And then we'll see what we can do to flesh out this final encounter, particularly the final building where you access it from the roof. And in general throughout the level, now that we have a kind of the critical path sorted, we can start thinking about adding extra optional routes and solutions to problems as well, which will be nice. But that's it for now. I hope you like where this is going and that you find it useful. If so, then please consider supporting the Patreon, which will help me justify the dozens of hours that I put into making these videos. Cheers for watching and see you in part four.